is the event. From brand ambassadors and event staffers to magicians and presenters, it's the one and only podcast to introduce the faces in and around the trade show and events industry. And here's our host, Scott Tokar. Welcome to Face the Event. My name is Scott Tokar. Uh, I am your ringleader, sort of your uh, MC of this world of uh, brand ambassadors, trade show staffers, badge scanners, crowd gatherers. If you're out on an activation, whether it's a local activation at a market, a golf course, a supermarket, or if it's a trade show, uh, or if it's international, this is the podcast for you. In today's episode, we will be discussing what to wear on the job. What, what What's the attire for an activation? Followed by a face-to-face -face interview with Jennifer Canali, one of the world's best badge scanners crowd gatherers out there on the trade show floor. And then we're going to follow all that up with a facepalm. So let's get right into the show. Here is what to wear on an activation. Booth uniform, costume, and attire. Um, this all depends on what the client wants. We tell everybody to have a black business suit that is a standard that everybody should have. Black dockers. Seems like everybody has black. You have to follow the lead uh, from the client. You want to do whatever the client asks you to be in. Look at the pictures. Look at the description that they ask you for. If you've got questions, ask. Even if you think it's annoying, ask. Always ask the client what they what they want you to wear. Sometimes they want you to wear their shirt. Sometimes they want you to wear your suit. Keeping in mind everything needs to be uh, conservative and business-like so that your, your business pants cannot be leggings. <laughs> it's professional and, and ironed and neat. Or if it's khaki pants, wear khaki pants. You know, if, you know it's important for that. Uh, most medical shows, it, it will be fairly conservative. A black suit, a white shirt, or just some type of well put together suit. But always in good taste. The biggest tip about that is you want to make sure that you look well-groomed. Make sure that your uh, skirt, suit, blouse, whatever is well-pressed. You don't want to look like you just dug it out of the sale bin at Forever 21. Um, sometimes, I, in the past, I've been hired as a costume character. So you're going to be literally in costume, which is a lot of fun. And if you're going to be in a costume, make sure you know uh, everything that you need going into it because they may assume you're going to come in you know some spandex and then you get there and you're, you have nothing to wear under the costume um, just make sure that you are prepared professional um, and on the conservative side <laughs> like for an event that i worked i had to wear a, a mandarin collar and i had to run all over town like two days before the event looking for a mandarin collar i had never purchased one so Again, ask questions. Uh, black pants and nice shoes will supply you with our own uh, booth staff polo shirt with our branding on it. Uh, maybe they will provide you with a, a polo shirt and the polo shirts, uh, polo shirts. I don't think there is a good polo shirt, at least for a female, especially the ones that uh, are made for men. Mm. My tip is, Talk to the client and say, is there any way I can get that shirt way ahead of time or at least the night before the show opens so that I can take it back to my hotel room and iron it? Because inevitably it has these, it's been folded for years in a package and there's terrible lines in it. I just think that makes you look unprofessional. We want to thank our friends Alexis Bays, Becky Jo Schwartz, Veronica Tavelli, Robin Bell, Jennifer Canali, Philip Victor and Larry Wyatt for their insight on what to wear. All right, well, today's guest is uh, is actually a personal friend of mine. I've worked with her on trade shows uh, for 10 years or more now. And um, I'm going to say that, that our guest here is, when I think of the best badge scanner, the one that gets the most badge scans, or that when I ask for a crowd gatherer, the one that has all the secrets to getting the best crowd, I think uh, Jennifer Canali, and uh, why don't we welcome to the show Jennifer Canali. Hi Jennifer, how are you doing? I'm great Scott, how are you? I am great, thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah. You know, when I, when I came up with the idea of doing this podcast, there's a few people that went on my list first and foremost, and you're one of them. 
thank you for joining us. Um, it sounds now, how long have you been? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to like because we've both been in the business for a long time. But we, I should just say, we've been in the business a long time. Let's think about your first trade show. Do you remember your first trade show? Remember my first trade? Well, the first one where I was on the trade show floor itself, right. or the first trade show where I was like working in ops and at registration. What? What? Which one? Yeah, in the business. I mean, because obviously, you know, when I was a kid, my dad and I, we used to go to fishing, you know, conventions or trade shows or something because he loved those. But um, when I started working one, it was like my senior year of high school. I did my very first trade show. Um, what about you? What, do you remember what it was and what you were doing? Uh, it was VM World. I don't remember the year. And if I did, I would not tell you. <laughs> exactly. And I started out uh, as one of just the supplemental staff for the show itself, holding a sign, directing people where to go here and there. And that was my very first, first show. And then the first show being on the trade show floor itself was RSA. And I'm not going to tell you what year that was either, because then you'll ask to see my AARP card and we're not doing that. <laughs> well, I, here's something promising. If you're if you're uh, early on in the trade show world, um, you're thinking, hey, can I make a career of this? Well, Jennifer is a great example um, of someone that has made a career of this. And um, um, actually, even though I fly all over the world, she has probably more flyer, free flyer mileage than, than <laughs> I do. Um, really well known on United. So, um, yes. So tell me what kind of duties you do. I mentioned uh, badge scanning and crowd gathering. Uh, what, yes. what do you like? First off, let's ask, what do you like to call yourself? There's a big argument in the world of trade shows of title. Big time. So what do you like to title yourself? Uh, if, since I do just about everything that's involved with trade shows, I just look at myself as trade show support staff. Anything the client needs, whether that would be the uh, like the show VM World or uh, Salesforce or any of those shows itself, to being someone who's there as the right hand man of the booth manager, right hand woman, whatever you want to say, to the presenter, to the crowd gatherer, to you know whatever. Uh, I've been involved in design and graphics for some of my clients, so I'm pretty much the jack of all trades when it comes to trade shows. So I just like to say trade show support staff because then it says that I will do just about anything that the client needs to do as long as it is within my little bag of magic tricks. Uh, magic tricks, well done. Um, have you thought about? <laughs> have you thought of? Um, uh, do you do, uh, do other things besides trade shows? Do you do other like uh, events or activations? I do. Um, a lot of the trade shows don't normally go in the summertime. I mean, there'll be a few like Semicon, DAC, there's that, but it's not a weekly gig. So I will pick up, uh, they call them BA events or brand ambassador events locally. A lot of times it'll be for festivals and fairs, uh, racing. I work the, uh, what is it? The, I forget what they get. The Chicago um, Air Show. So I have a client at the Air Show. So, you you know, you'll help set up the booth. And, I mean, that's some good manual labor. It keeps you in shape during the summer. And I'll work their activation. And then I get to see the Blue Angels for free and up close. So I'll also do, like, you know, I run marathons, but I also like to work the expo. So I'll be able to see some of the new products that are coming out that I can try out at the next races. So there's always an opportunity to pick up work in this industry when the industry is actually running. And it keeps you diversified in your skills and it keeps you from burning out. So you mentioned the word brand ambassador. I personally love yeah. that word, but it has some different connotations. What do you find different in the word when you go out as a brand ambassador? Is it money or is it, I mean, what's the difference between like a, an event staff versus a, a brand ambassador? Um, event staff is, ba and there are, you're right, there are multiple pay grades and there's multiple job titles. I mean, event staff is just specifically that. You're just there, you're holding a sign, you're answering general questions. Brand ambassador means you have to know at least some talking points about the product. You have to know who the client is, maybe what they do, uh, just, you know, how, not how to sell it itself because that becomes the next level, but who you can introduce people to, just kind of the welcoming committee. And hi, we're here today to uh, welcome you in. Come try this. So, and that's all you so do. So as a brand ambassador, though, I, I think sometimes I think of some activations like uh, supermarket bar or uh, liquor store activations as brand ambassador kind of jobs. Do you find that? Yes, that's 
That's very true, too. Uh, in the non-trade show world, those are called more uh, samplers, things like that. But that is a brand ambassador position as well. Now, that doesn't pay as uh, as well as, as being paid at a trade show or being like the mobile marketing kind of person. No, it's a, it's generally a lower pay um, because the skill set isn't as high. You know, it's I, I don't make as much money as you do, Scott, because I don't have the skills that you have you and do. I don't have you the talents. Great skills. Yes, but, you know, I can't do the card tricks that you can do. And, you know, I, I haven't seen a thousand hours to do that. No way. So, but, so. Well, uh, then let me ask you, I mean, how much can a, if I'm doing a, an activation, say at a, at a, at a golf course or at a, at a, a supermarket or in a bar, um, is there a, a, a going rate? Is it an hourly rate? How does that work? Generally an hourly rate. Yes. Right. Uh, on trade shows, most of the time you want the day rate. Whereas when you move over to activations that are, you know, the, the pop-ups, the, uh, the fairs, the sporting events, that's generally on an hourly basis. It doesn't come. Have you ever done uh, like a car show where you're traveling with the, the same staff from city to city to city? I do not work the auto show. I have worked the uh, various auto shows, but not as the product specialist, mm -hmm. and they're the ones who travel. Mm -hmm. The brand ambassador is the local hire, the product specialist, and again, they're on a higher pay scale, but they go, um, you know, to all the different cities with them. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, One second, it's allergy season. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Spring allergy. That's all right. Well, um, tell me, um, what uh, what got you into this world into this uh, event staffing uh, host hostessing badge scanning world well, it's it's kind of a funny story that can be taken in a few different ways um i had just moved back from hawaii to to san francisco and i didn't have a permanent place yet so i was on craigslist and i was trying to pick up gigs and you know and everybody said just pick up gigs and you'll find what you're looking for i was putting in various applications for retail because i have a strong retail background and i was like what do i do where do i go and i was actually sleeping on my friend's couch while i was looking for an apartment so back when craigslist was actually the place to go to get jobs i'm on craigslist every day and there was a, a post that said X amount of money a day, be a crowd gatherer, stand in the aisle, smile at every single person that comes by, invite them to come in and watch a presentation, and I'll pay you X amount a day. So I answered the ad, and it was one of our mutual friends, and he said, yeah, I'll pay X amount a day, but you know, you have to have systematic rejection. You're going to have 95% of people tell you no when they walk by. I'm like, okay, you know, it sounds like my dating life, so <laughs> all right. So I applied, and that was RSA. So that was my first trade show, and I've been working for him and various other people. That, that was kind of it. I fell in love with it the first night. So, um, the the how did you get your job? Is it, are you doing like agents, or are you doing this through uh, like just booking yourself, or just knowing people? How, how do you get the gigs? <laughs> So a lot of it is the, the, I mean, I lucked out on this one. I got really, really lucky because it was with an established agency who knew other people in the agency who was able to give me a reference and say, this is a good person to work for. That's a good person to work for. I like to work for agencies. I know a lot of people strike out on their own, but I, it, it's not for me. I like the agency securing the clients. I like them calling me and saying, hey, can you do this gig at this time for this amount of rate? Boom. And I can say yes or no. Okay, we'll submit you and come back. I just, it's not my wish to be able to have to go out there and walk the show floor and secure the clients and do the back and forth, the negotiations and the paperwork and the insurance and all the, and the marketing and the advertising. And I know that's all what you do. And thank you for doing that because that's not something that I want to do. So I prefer to work with agencies. Um, and again, then they see you and they say, oh, who's that girl that worked for you for blah, blah, blah. Let's get her again. And then you know that you've got the same gigs year after year after year for the same clients. And it, it just, it's a lot easier for me. And it's worth the, the pay differential gotcha. to me that it is. Let's talk about, um, if you're going with agencies, you need to have uh, photographs and you need to have a resume. Yes. T tell me about that. Do, or do you have like professional photos that you, that you submit to these things? 
I do. Um, they're a little bit old, but that's okay. I, I still look the same. You know, if they can say that 40 is the new 30, I can say that gray is the new blonde. But uh, you have, I have a resume, and I update it about every six months. I just add the shows on it. Uh, a lot of people have a video reel, and then that's submitted as well. So there are clips from the different shows that I've worked with on that. Uh, so I have the paper, I have the video resume, and then, of course, testimonials from different agencies, different clients, different coworkers. That pretty much once you've been in the industry for three or four years and people start seeing the same shows and the same clients on your resume, that's all you need. It's, it's very much word of mouth as well as your reputation that gets you the jobs it's, over it's the resume. relationship building is what, what really does it, huh? Yes. Yeah. And um, so let's let's talk a little bit about being on the trade show floor itself. We've, we've kind of talked a little bit about how we got there and how we're getting work and what we prefer to do. But uh, on the trade show floor, is there um, certain things that you find um, secrets? Uh, how about... Um, uh, getting through the, the trade show lines and getting to the show or do, do you work at local shows or t tell me about at the show itself. Oh, at the show. Uh, the first thing is, is that you should always be an hour earlier than what your call time is, because if it can go wrong, it will, you know, your, your seam will rip out or the line will be long or you can't find your booth or what happens a good 50% of the time is your client forgets to get you a badge. And I, I've had the same client for nine years, and I work four shows a year for them, and at least two of those shows, he'll forget to sign me up for a batch. Mm -hmm. So you have to go there early so that you're not in a panic about it, because the absolute last thing that your client and the people who pay you to be there need to worry about is where you are or that you have a problem. So get there early, get your coffee, go in the restroom, make sure everything's in place, then go to where you need to go. And that's the most important tip, because... Especially if you're traveling and you don't know the convention center well, then you need to be there early because there are going to be 100,000 people there who also don't know where they're going or what they're doing. And you need to be ahead of them because if not, you will be stuck in that line and you will be late. And that's not a good first impression to give. So what, is the, what are the hours of a typical show? You know, if you're, if you're working um, uh, hours and breaks and when are you on and off and that kind of thing? That's kind of a funny story because trade shows are usually open anywhere from six to nine hours. Um, CES is a bear. That one's nine to six every day. But you're always on. You're always working. A uh, funny story is I work NAB every year. And when I used to live in San Francisco, I would just fly in that morning because it didn't start till, you know, I didn't have to be there till 10 or 11. So I take the 6 a.m. down. Well, that also means that you have to be at the airport at four or five in the morning, which means you need to be up at two o'clock in the morning. And chances are, if you're going to NAB, everyone on that plane is also going to NAB. So when you're standing outside the United Club needing coffee at 4.30 in the morning, you're on because people are going to talk to you because they see a girl with blonde hair and eyelashes and they're going to talk to you. Oh, you're going to NAB. Who are you working for? Who are this? So that, you know, nine hour day just became a 17 hour day because it starts at 430 in the morning. It starts your commute. It starts at breakfast in your hotel. You are always on. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, you go to have a cocktail after work. If you've got your employee shirt on, you're working. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Get that yeah. shirt off so that you're not recognized yeah, to that yeah. company. That's what I tell my girl. Sweater on or get that shirt off. You cannot be seen branded anywhere. Right. So, right, right. so um, what, what is a normal day? Are, are you on for the entire nine hours or do you get breaks? And what's that? What's the... the, the, the client, really. I mean, it, it, it varies day to day. If I'm supporting a presenter who's only doing one show that's 10 minutes long, uh, once an hour, well, yeah, then I'm only technically, I can take my breaks and this and that in between. But if I'm working a show where there's constant activity in the booth, then, you know, I'll get my hour break here. Or I'll get 15 minutes here and there whenever I need it. Uh, it all depends on the show and it depends on who you're working for and what your job responsibilities are. Obviously, you don't want to be the person who's like, when do I get my break? When do I get my break? But you also don't want to be the person who, you know, hasn't had a sip of water or used the toilet in eight hours. You know, and, and you, again, 
the good thing about being in this business this long is those repeat clients who just trust you and you don't have to check in and out with them. Uh, they know that, you know, every four hours I've got to disappear. Right. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it, the thing about the trade show industry is, is it is constantly dynamic and everything's always changing. And if they say you have a lunch break at noon, that does not mean you get it. The CEO might come in and say, hey, I want to get up on stage and do a special presentation. Guess what? You don't go to lunch. Be flexible. Noon. Be flexible for sure. Yeah, that's you, you have to be flexible in this business because things don't go as planned. Right. So you just kind of when the client looks at you and says, OK, go, you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now I, I mentioned on the intro here that when I think of someone that gets the most scans or uh, gets the best crowd, uh, I, I, I automatically think of you. Oh, thank Can you. Can you share some secrets? Why? Why do you get such good scans? Um, well, the, the being a badge scanner is a lot different than being a crowd gatherer. I mean, it's it's the same thing in a sense. I mean, the first one, it's they just want leads and it's zap and go, zap and go, zap and go, zap and go. The crowd gatherer is when I'm supporting someone like you who's doing a show, I've got to wrangle them in somehow and get them to stay for your presentation. So you have to be completely, uh, what do I say? You have to be able to read people who are coming down the aisle within about 0.1 second and figure out what kind of clip that you can get them to get them in to do what you want. So you have to kind of be a little psychotic when it comes to it. I mean, you have to be either this big bubbly girl or the, you know, you have to figure out what you have to make your personality into that will get that person to do what you want. So am I civil on the show floor? Yes, I am. You have to have those personalities because you've got to be able to manipulate these people to do what you want them to do. Uh, and, it's funny you have to be civil. <laughs> you do. Yeah. I mean, because... Some people respond to happy. Some people respond to very serious. Would you like to come in and see a presentation about that? The other people are like, hey, we got free stuff. Come on. I mean, well, you have to be. One of the secrets that. One of the secrets that I've noticed of you when working is that you are working. And a lot of times I see the other booth staffers that are hired that get tired, uh, don't have the stamina. Um, uh, I guess you marathon running probably helps a little bit with that stamina. But I think also... Um, the people that are successful in this business try it out and discover that they love being in this business, and then it shows. Yes. So I think yes. that that you, when you're standing on the edge of the of the the, the booth, um, oh, you, you can see on the edge. you can <laughs> yeah you can see the people that, that you like what you're doing, and that you're working that you're on all the time. So um, doesn't that get tiring? Yes, absolutely. Um, I will say, and, and don't take this offensively, but to be a crowd gatherer, you are the hardest working person on the show floor that day. And that's not to take away from, you know, presenters who obviously have weeks of work that they have to do. But once that show floor door opens and you get literally tens of thousands of people rushing at you, you work. And it's just bam, 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 bam. You don't take a break. Lather, rinse, repeat all day long. Because if you take a break, a decision maker of XYZ company that your client's been trying to land for three years just walked by and you missed him. That client's deal probably could have not only secured booth space for next year, but your job for next year. Right. So you have to always be on. You always have to be welcoming. And yeah, it's exhausting. It's very tiring. But I love it because it's it's also an adrenaline rush. I mean, it, it's just, you know, that, that show floor opens, and especially when you've got a booth that's right up front. And you see all the people that are behind the stanchions and it's like, you know, you get all excited. And then, the, and then these people come flooding in and I kind of liken it to uh, the big gazelle migration and they come through the river and all that crocodile. <laughs> that, that's literally what you have to be. Yeah. And it's these attendees are running a gauntlet. And you've got to snag them and get them into your booth. Well, and there's, there's ebbs you... and flows here. So when the show floor opens in the morning, they're running like gazelles. But at, uh, at, at 11 o'clock in the morning, or at worse, at 5 o'clock in the evening, no, it's, it's like the Sahara as opposed to the savanna. So what do you do in, in those times when, it's, when, when there's nobody around? Oh, well, and again, that's when you have to adapt your strategy. One of the things that, um, I'll give you a secret, one of the things that a good 
trade show support staff person will do is they will learn the schedule of the events on the trade show floor. When are they serving coffee? When does happy hour start? Where are the booths that have the free beer? And you will learn to kind of position yourself and work your speeches to that. If you can hear when a session breaks, you can hear the spin up on the trade show floor of people starting to come in. And you know, hey, people are starting to come in, we're going to hit them fast. If you don't hear that, then you have more time to kind of, instead of stop somebody in the way, you have time, hey, you know, how's the show going for you? You want to come in and see a presentation? Yeah, it's going to be great. Come on, sit down. I'll go get Scott. He's going to do one special for you. You know, you, you have t- that time to adapt. And again, it, you can't just stand there and say, hey, you want a free shirt? Sit down. I mean, if you do that, you're going to sound like a parrot all day. And by two o'clock, you're going to be done with it. You really are. So you've got to be able to adapt and know everything that's going on. Because people will ask you, hey, I want to get a beer. Yeah, you know what? They're serving one. Go get one, bring one back. Sit down and watch the show. Do, do you have any like um, rituals you know, that, that you that you partake in in order to get yourself psyched up or healthy or, or uh, you know, before the show, during the show, after the show? I, I do. Um, being a little bit older than most, uh, getting a good night's sleep. You know, I, I used to be able to do the fly-in in the morning, like when I lived in San Francisco, I go to Vegas, I used to be, I cannot do that anymore. So I need my good night's sleep. I have my stretching that I do in the morning. I have to have my cup of coffee and everybody knows. And that's another reason I get to the show early is I get to the show floor early. I find the exhibitor lounge because then I'm there. Everything is fine. All right. So So there's a lot of newbies here. Uh, What's an exhibitor lounge? Never heard of that. What is that? Um, generally there'll be a room or an area set off that is reserved specifically for people who, uh, sponsors, exhibitors, whatever they call them at the show, who, uh, can go in there and just kind of take a break. There'll be sometimes some coffee, water, soda, depending on the show setup. I like to get in there early and just kind of collect myself, make sure that everything's in place. And then I go to the booth and the same thing after work. I don't, I don't like to linger after work. I generally, um, I don't like to stay in Vegas in the casino hotels because it's just, there's too much going on. I have my secret little hotels with my gym. I I walk home. It's very relaxing to me. I go to bed very early because if I'm solo at the booth and I'm the product specialist and I'm the, sometimes the presenter, there'll be overnight script changes. So I need to be up at four in the morning to make sure that if there are overnight script changes or all of a sudden your staff changed or, you know, whatever changed, um, that I'm aware of it. So I go to bed as early as I can. And I also get up as early as I can so that I can be fresh and ready for the show floor. So, um, some, sometimes as a a trade show staffer, um, host, hostess, crowd gather, sometimes there's other people that are on the, the show floor that are also in the same position as you. Do you ever find yourself being called upon to be the, um, the lead or the manager of this kind of staff? And do you get paid more if you do that? Of course. I mean, it's a different set of skills. It's a, it's a, a skill set that's different. There are several clients who I have that I not only – manage be the team lead of the staff but i work closely with the client itself obviously through the agency to interview pick the staff make sure that you know they're well trained get all their t-shirt sizes do all that behind the scenes work so that when they get to the trade show floor the booth manager or the exhibit house or whatever just says jennifer's in charge she knows what she's doing any questions just ask her and i do a lot of that uh, lately because again it is an elevated position it does pay a lot more which is attractive it's a lot more work it's a lot more prep work but um it alleviates some stress off my clients because some of them have you know 80 by 100 booths and they're just like no i can't deal with that well i also but, think that, that if you're in that position and if you're trusted that way that's how you end up traveling uh to these shows yes. instead of just doing the local shows um, you know, if you're in one of the big markets, uh, if you're in San Francisco, um, uh, Las Vegas, Chicago, New Orleans, uh, Orlando, w- w- can you give me think of some of the big markets out there that are like the really big? New York. I'm sorry. That's another one. I, in New York. New York. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, your your three biggest convention centers in the country are San Francisco, oh, not San Francisco, uh, Orlando, Las Vegas, and here in Chicago. And it's one of the reasons I moved to Chicago was mm-hmm. to be closer to work and be more accessible. Yeah. Well, so, in Chicago, you have more than just one convention center. You have McCormick Place, which is really th- at least three convention centers <laughs> really in itself. 
Then you have Rosemont. Yeah. Then you have yep. Navy Pier. Then you have yep. uh, the Hyatt, which is a smaller uh, venue. And there's all these smaller hotel venues, too, to work. So, my goodness, there's a lot of venues to work there. A lot of work out there, isn't there? Uh, well, not now. But yes, there there well, is a lot. We're filming this right now. We're 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 doing this during the the coronavirus outbreak. If you're listening to this at some oh other time, um, so uh, we're kind of all stuck at home. But usually, it, it, safe it, at home. We are safe at home. Stuck is a bad word. Yeah. Uh, well, um, it gives me ch a chance to talk with all my friends on the podcast. But there you go. Um, uh, but but there's a lot of venues out there, and with a lot of venues, there's a lot of trade shows out there. There's a lot of work out there normally. Um, there is, but and especially in the big hubs like the Orlando, Chicago, Las Vegas, there are a lot of shows, and there's a lot of talent. But when you staff the booths and you manage like I do, when you travel the country, sometimes you'll get shows there in an area that. Like Nashville. I don't know anybody in Nashville. I, I just did a show in, in Dallas. And you're like, oh, my God, who am I going to hire? I don't know anybody in Dallas. And, you know, you become part of a traveling team, and that's a whole different can of worms that we can talk about. But um, when you do go to some of these smaller venues, it, it's it's completely different because the the whole – climate is completely reversed you know you don't you don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of people everywhere all of a sudden you have a 10,000 person show and you've got to be able to adapt to that as well and when you have to find staff to work it with you it's challenging so I'll, I'll give you a little secret here from, from my standpoint um, I work a farm progress show every year and I know that show. yeah yeah and and often I'll look for people that are in Chicago willing to go to um, you know to, to Boone Iowa or to uh, you know a small town in Illinois if they're willing to travel then uh, I have a better choice of who I'm going to going to hire sometimes I can afford to give them a hotel room sometimes um, the day rate is you know hey if you can find a couch to crash on or if you can you can share. Do you do that? Do you share yeah. the room with, with people sometimes to, at location? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, very, very rarely. And this, this is another challenge with uh, our job that a lot of people don't understand is very rarely will I ever, when I travel, have a room to myself. You will constantly have people around you. And while that's fun and while it gives me an opportunity to improve and to just catch up on relationships I have with people. When you leave your house at two o'clock in the morning on a Monday to go to O'Hare and you don't have any alone time except for when you were in the bathroom showering, if that, until Friday night when you get home, it's it's draining. And, and that's part of the exhaustion as well. And that's part of always being on. And we've built up quite a network behind the scenes of women who travel together and we trust each other and we have keys to each other's apartments there's at least four girls on the trade show industry who have keys to my apartment and if they're coming to chicago i live a half a mile from mccormick they stay here doesn't matter whether i'm home or not so we have that um reciprocity with each other and we'll also get together on hotel rooms and travel expenses so we we all work together behind the scenes and we do that because we love what we do yeah, we without, love a doubt, without a doubt. And and there is a family out there on the road. When you when you get to the level of making friends in the trade show industry, uh, be nice to everybody, especially at the beginning. Um, because oh, yeah. you because you need to find allies and friends there. But yeah. but when you do, um, they're lifelong friendships that you end up making. Um, uh, I may never get over to your house ever, but uh, I, you're certainly a friend and, and I see you on the on the road all the time. So uh, we're, we're talking about the, the, the love of this, and, and I, again, I think that there's a lot of people listening or watching on, on the YouTube channel that are, that are new to this. If you could give um, beginning Jennifer some advice from Jennifer now who's experienced, for someone that's new in this thing, is there something you'd like to say to someone that was new and, and uh, you know, with, with the information you have now, the experience? Yeah, I um, be, like you said earlier, be be flexible because if you can't handle an environment that is continuously, and I mean continuously, changing, then this isn't the environment for you. 
you must be flexible, you must always be positive, and you must always realize that, again, you are always on. I mean, when you're in the restroom, you're seen, you're on. Um, and say yes to everything. That's obviously reasonable. But, you know, if the client asks you, hey, can you go and get me a cup of coffee? Then your answer is yes. Or, hey, can you clear this these things off? Your answer is yes. Your answer isn't, that's not my job to do that. You know, that one morning a client asked me, hey, you know, can you vacuum the floor? And, okay, you know, I'm early. Why not? I've worked for that client every year at that show from then on. That's and the right. girl that was working for me who refused, she doesn't even work for the agency anymore. That's right. Well, so, I, I really think it's the it's loving it, being flexible, being the first one on the trade show floor and the last one off the trade show floor, um, and and be being willing to work, stand there on the edge of the carpet and 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 catch those gazelle or catch yeah. those desert tortoises when it's that time too. Well, and you know me, I'm never on the edge of the carpet. I'm always out in the aisles. You know, I'm always getting in trouble. It's so funny. I'll see girls that are, that are, they will toe that edge of that carpet and they will like reach out with the goodie. And I'm like, get out there in the aisles, you know? And of course, show management will come by and yell at you and tell you to get back on there. But you know, I don't consider a show a success unless show management has come over and told me I have to get back in my booth or I'm too loud. You know, the show is not a success until that happens. And I usually try to establish it on the first day. You know, I, Jennifer, I was I was about to wrap everything up and you opened up a whole nother um, like subject matter. You know what I want to do? I want to have you back again so we can talk about maybe those instances because... I think there's a whole lot of wisdom in what you just said. But, um, uh, those are the tricks of the trade. Yes. Well, well, come back. Please come back and tell and tell us more tricks of the trade. It was uh, it was great having you on the show. Thank you for sharing um, some of this, this, some of these secrets, and giving us kind of a peek into someone that's really made a career out of out of trade shows and event staffing and that kind of thing. And. Um, you know, truthfully, if you want a, a recommendation from me, um, you can add me to that resume and say, you know, uh, Scott Tokar says you're one of the very best of crowd gathering and badge scanning. If anyone wanted to follow you, do you have like any Instagram or, or, or stuff that you do? That, I do. Yeah. I, I have my Instagram. Uh, it's SF as in San Francisco, where I'm from, J E N. 2902. So that is my Instagram, sfgen2902. Not a lot of stuff happening right now, but uh, as soon as trades and marathons start running again, I'll definitely be up there. You can take a look at some of the pictures that I've done in the past. Uh, you're probably in some of them, Scott, from some of the shows that I've done for you. You've cried yeah, gathered for me many times. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, thank you very much. Um, we look forward to having you back again. Um, uh, thanks for joining us here on the, on the show. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for giving us that insight. And now it's my favorite time of the show. It's the Face Palm. This is a trade show family picnic with Larry White. All right. Face Palm moment. Ugh. Yeah, there's been a lot of those over the years, I have to tell you. But the one that came to my mind first, and I still can't quite wrap my mind around this. Uh, this was this was a a public show. So if you don't know what I mean by public, a show that is open to the public, okay, as opposed to just a user conference where only those folks are allowed to sign up and come to this show. This was a a, a public show. And it was a large booth that I was working in. We had a large theater area with many, many seats, right? Plenty of places to sit down between presentations. So it's between presentations. And I look over and here is an entire family of people, mom, dad, I think about four kids sitting on the carpet in the middle of the booth, spread out in a circle with lunch, like a picnic, all laid out. They're sharing stuff, passing out the fries, they're, the whole deal, just oblivious to what's going on around them. And that one, every time I think of it, I still go. So there you go. Well, that about wraps up season one, episode four of Face the Event. Again, my name is Scott Tokar. I hope to see you next week. 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Our Face the Event podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, on iTunes. It's available on Spotify, on uh, TuneIn. It's on iHeartRadio. We are even on YouTube, so you can see our pretty faces throughout these interviews. Um, We have a brand new podcast for you next week, and the only way you can get it is if you subscribe. And you know what? You can really help me out if you leave us a favorable comment on your favorite platform. That'll help us reach a few more subscribers as well. You know, I've been thinking we need a closing sentence, a closing line for this podcast. And since we are all brand ambassadors, since we are all trade show staffers, and since we are all out there with brands as part of our uh, our world, why don't I just say your advertisement here. See you next week.